Hello friends, welcome to Scientific Investing. Wish you a very happy weekend. Uh, one of the things which uh, off let everybody has been talking about uh, the state of the market. And I think we have come uh, very far too soon from where we were in the months of uh, Feb and March uh, when there was pessimism all around. But in last four or five months, the markets have done really well. And one question is there on everybody's mind that uh, is this market going to top out? Is this market overvalued and all? And I don't want to do the market analysis every second month, but whenever I believe that, you know, uh, there is a, a fair uh, logic to do this kind of analysis, when I see uh, myself uh, getting questioned internally around what I should do, uh, I try to go and again, I try to look at the data and I try to seek the answers. So given again, it's a hot topic. Everybody has been discussing about it. There are two different kinds of views. I thought I will again try to address this topic where the market currently stands, uh, whether it is going to fall big time, are we overvalued or it is going to rise. And that is what I would like to do along with the data. So let's go ahead. Also through this exercise, I want to touch upon certain investing biases, which uh, we as an investor face. And I would like to highlight two biases in this video. The first bias is bias of thinking in isolation. Uh, market is not a unidirectional place, but most of the times we investors or we traders, we think only in terms of price movement. Abhi kya hua hai ki last char mahine mein uh, nifty 20% upar hai, small cap index 30-35% upar hai, mid cap index uh, sab se achha return diya hai. So all we are looking is, aray market to 30-40% upar chala gaya hai, to abhi overvalued ho gaya hai. But this is thinking in isolation because price is only one thing. We have to look at the time dimension. We have to look at the earnings dimension because market earnings per run karta hai. Price is an outcome of earning. So price to bad hai, but earning kaise bad hai, wo bhi dekhna zaruri hai. And the best thing we can do is we can look at the latest quarter result. Uh, I think... Uh, uh, a month back, we finished almost all the company's results of Q1, FY24. So let us look at how FY24 result was. So abhi pe maine kya kiya hai? I have taken the top 500 companies by market cap, nifty 500 companies basically. Thoda idhar udhar ho sakta hai. And I have tried to remove the outliers. Now what I mean by outliers? Outliers are those which can have significant impact on the overall numbers we are trying to analyze because of their odd behavior. For example, let us say that a company thi jo last year loss mein thi aur kafi loss kiya aur isi aur profit mein aagi aur kafi profit kiya. Now this is an outlier situation. Usually you want to have stable companies in the market so that you can get a stable view. So I have tried to remove those kind of outlier companies jaha kuch highly loss making to highly profit making companies ya fir insurance type ki companies jaha baut hi high variation of profitability ka because of accounting practices and all. I have tried to get rid of these companies and they are high, those are hardly 5-6% uh, of the data. Still 90% of the data by market cap, by revenue, by profitability, it more or less remains same. Uske baad humne kya kiya hai? Us data ko lekar last year Q1 FY23 mein or this time Q1 FY24 mein Unka year over year revenue growth rate kya hua hai, unka year over year profit growth rate kya hua hai, unke margins kaise vary ki hai. We have tried to analyze this. Now, what we see that the year over year revenue growth rate of Q1 FY24 for these top 500 companies, excluding the outliers, has been 10%, which is a healthy double digit number. The PAT growth rate is much more encouraging. The market basket of Nifty 500 companies have done almost 19% PAT growth rate. It's a very, very healthy number. And if you see the margins, the margins of these companies at a consolidated level has also improved from 10.5% to 11.3%. So that is why you see why your PAT growth rate has been higher than your revenue growth rate. Now, if the EPS of the market itself is growing at 19%, the PE today, which is at 20, 
if the EPS can keep growing at 20% and if the market doesn't move for next one year, your PE itself will compress by 20%. That is how you have to look at it. So it's good to look at the prices, but do not look at prices in isolation. Always look at prices with respect to the earnings growth rate, which is happening. Now, we can't predict that Q1 will be the same growth, 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 the growth, the same growth, the same growth, but that is why investing is a continuous journey. We need to continuously assess and see ki, uh, with respect to the valuation and earnings growth rate. It's not that there is a lot of distance created that the earnings growth rate is coming and the valuation is going on or the reverse. But if they are going and saying, it's okay. So note down this point that don't look at the price growth rate in isolation. Look at the earnings growth rate also. And this quarter earnings growth rate has been very, very healthy without getting into predicting what will happen in Q2. Now let me get, give you another data point and let me highlight another bias which many of we investors go through. That is bias of recency, recency bias. Hum just abhi kya hua hai, usse bahut hi mantra mukt ho jate hai. Uh, we try to think what has happened recently, that is the only reality and nothing else is there. Because we forget what has happened one year back, we forget what has happened two years back. So again, if you remember, I have made market related videos on critical juncture in July and June 2022, in March 2023. And when I was making these videos in June 2022, I put a very, very interesting framework of looking Nifty returns on a three year basis, five year basis. Because you see average return, it varies from 10-13-14% vary karta hai long term return. Usse jada aur kam nahi mila hai, given the kind of uh, market we have in India, GDP, growth rate, whatever. So basically, if you are going to go up very high or going down very high, so you are on the extreme side of standard deviation and the reversion to mean will kick in. Uh, I run a scientific investing community where we run this practitioner membership program where we meet weekly and there is a whole repository of, uh, you know, content. Uh, many of you think that uh, the work we do is all YouTube work, but what is there on YouTube is hardly 5% of the work we have done. Do go and check the practitioner page, do check... Uh, what we cover under those 16, 17 courses. And there are a lot of company case studies, sector case study, industry case study, valuation case study, technical analysis case study. So much of work we do. We connect on a regular basis. We do meetups on a weekly basis. So do check the practitioner program. So I thought let's do the exercise again, given there has been 30% move in the market in last three months. So how this looks. So I'll show you the three year and five year number. If you look at the three year number and how to read this chart, so the light gray line is your Nifty 500, uh, which is around 16,800. Then you have two lines, the black line and the blue line. The black line is three year rolling CAGR return with a lag. That means if today is June, hai, from June 2020, what has been the return today? So that is the lagging return and three year lead, which is the blue line that says, agar aaj June 2017 or invest kiya, to usko June 2020 mein kitna return mila. So one is forward looking with historical data, one is backward looking. The theory is, agar aaj ke date mein mera lag return bhoot hi achcha hai. Uh, jo mean return hai, usse bahut, bahut high hai. it is on the higher side of the standard deviation from the mean return, then the probability to make those kind of great returns diminishes and vice versa. So, if you have three year ka CAGR return minus 10% tha because of 2008-9, the whole recession crash, the next three years, the returns were very good. So, your lead return, that means by 2012, if you would have invested here, you made more than uh, you know, 24, 25% return. And then many times market remains in the pair zone. So it's not always that we will always be at extreme. Extremes happens rarely. Extreme is a rarity and median is a reality. And many times market is in real zone. It's those extreme times when it goes into rarity. Now, when we look at this lag data, so if you see this lag data, uh, you know, if you see it here in 2012, 
uh, it was around 20% and still uh, even on a lead basis, we got 20% return. But here somewhere in 15, your lag data was around 22 and next few months, uh, next uh, lead three year return was around 8%. Uh, again, if we see lag data was 20%, this return was around 6%, but it is not always true. Uh, the another example is if you see here also lag data was very, very high. This was like very high and then your next three year return because of the whole recession, it was much lesser. Uh, if you see the reverse in 2020, because of COVID, your lag data return went in negative and next three year returns have been very positive. But there are some times, if you look at this time of 19, your lag data, even if it is around 20, your lead return is also 10%. So it's not like it works exactly in the perfect correlation, but it works with certain amount of correlation. And hence, we cannot take our decision only on this variable. I'll come uh, more towards that later on. But if we date a three-year return, dekhte hai, to this return on a lag basis was around uh, almost 27-28%. Uh, uh, and now currently we are standing somewhere around 21%, which is still very, very decent. So on a three-year basis, it looks like that uh, uh, we might be on the higher side of the curve. But let us see now five-year data. When we look at the five-year data, which means the return CAGR from five-year back point till today, again, if we see this peak somewhere around 20%, because five-year CAGR, your long-term CAGR is 10-12% So five-year CAGR, if you have 20%, hai, that is a very, very good return at an index level. And again, you will see when your five-year CAGR goes above 20% on a lag basis, the next five-year CAGR return usually is much lesser, almost half. Uh, if you look at this data also, the next five-year CAGR has been lesser. Abhi kya hai ki, if you look at the ma uh, March 2023, we hit this number around 9%, which is lesser than the mean. So actually we had gone lesser than the mean and then we have a rally and now we are standing around 13%. So three year basis pe kafi acha lag raha hai wo number. Agar aap four month basis pe dekho ge to aur acha lag raha hai. But agar aap ye five year basis pe ja ke dekho aur 2018 se 2023 ka market aap lo. To koi aisa nahi ki bohut hi anapshan aap return aaya hai. We are still far from this 20% kind of scenario of that return. So agar aap mota moti 13, uh, three year or five year ko aap jodo ge. So we are nowhere close to attractive. Let's accept. We are somewhere above than median. Let's accept. But we are not there at the top. And the longer horizon is clearly highlighting that. Also, remember the earnings growth rate we had. So when you, you are somewhere higher than the mean, so we have, you are somewhere in between your mean and higher standard deviation point, risky point, we are still in the middle with a 19% kind of profit growth rate, which can keep taking the prices up. So, if you 19%, let's say 16% ka bhi agar, uh, aapka EPS growth rate aata rehta hai, to aapka agar market bhi 16% se price grow kar rahe, you will still remain at similar kind of valuation. Remember that point. And it's very difficult to predict. So, that is why being in the market is very, very important. People have this chill of timing the market, ki hum perfectly under gaya, perfectly bahar gaya. But you have to understand that being in the market is very important because if you are outside the market and if you miss the bus, it's very difficult to enter. Always partial profit booking can work, but still you need to participate. And a thing is that we think that the market is bottom time. Kar den se khub paisa banta hai. My answer is yes or no, and I will make a separate video because it needs a very detailed analysis of last 10 years of data that even if you would have timed the market to perfection versus somebody who is doing SIP, dono mein kitna return hai. I am telling you the outcomes are very, very interesting. Uh, I will do in a separate video. But the point I want to highlight is because the market is dynamic, the earnings are dynamic. Staying in the market is very important. So, naya paisa lagana. और जो पैसा लगा हुआ है उसको राइड होने देना ये दो बहुत ही अलग चीजें हैं। The market 
may not provide us the comfort to put the new money. But when the market is good, when the earnings are good, when on a five year basis, you don't see a froth, it might make sense to let the invested money run until we saw some real big froth. Now, how that froth will be? Abhi koi kehta hai ki market to 12,000 pe chala jayega, ye correction aa jayega, wo correction aa jayega, uh, without logic. So let me put some effort again through data and tell ki correction aa sakta hai. Because as I said, we are somewhere above the fair zone. It's not like we, we are in an attractive zone. But we are not in the uh, extreme caution zone. So how things could pan out and let's do some scenario analysis. And though I am showing you the number of only to Nifty 500, uh, we have a product called Data in Insights as a service, which we call Simba, Scientific Investing Market Breath Analyzer. And there we cover the whole market in much more detail at index level, sector level, industry level, company level. And we provide one month of Simba access almost free at one rupee token amount. So if you want to explore Simba, go and register to the Simba portal insights.insight.scientificinvesting.in. Uh, insight so if you see here, what we have done is the current PE of the market is around 23, which is not at all comfort attractive and comfortable for sure. Let us accept this fact. Uh, this is where the Nifty 500 level is, and this is where the EPS is. So if you divide this by this, you get the PE around this. Now, there are two dimensions on which the market is moving. Time is a third dimension it moves. That is where your CAGR and all comes. Let us forget about time. Let us focus on two things. Market price-wise, kitna correct ho sakta hai or EPS kitne se grow ho sakta hai. Okay? If you see these scenarios of minus 10%, minus 5%, 5%, 10%, 15%, 20%. These are the five possible EPS growth rate scenarios. I am just trying to do a simulation and see where are the probabilities in our favor against it. So, ye jo paanch hai, ye hamare EPS ke scenarios hai. And let us say ki price correction jo nifty 500 ka hai, 5%, 10%, 15%, 20. Why I am not taking beyond 20 is people predicting yeah crash, wo crash. Last year, what we saw 16% correction on nifty, that was the fifth worst correction of last 20 year. So, nifty 50 goes under time correction, it goes under price correction, but the volatility is much lesser what beers can think of. So, and I will tell you why a 20% correction could be a decent correction. And this is where we stay right now, the 19% quarterly EPS growth rate. We are at the almost right side, extreme side of the most pessimistic return I can think of because 20% is very good. Now the thing is, let us say that 19% growth rate ghat jayega. Maybe market 19% se grow nahi karega. By the time we finish FY24, let us say the EPS grew just by 10%. Matlab ki aapka teen quarter 10% se bhi kam hoga. Tab ye 19% and less than 10% karke net net 10% aega. Let us say ki ye 10% se correct hota hai. And Nifty 500 corrects by 5%. So I will not get into charts, not because I can't do it, but I don't want to make this video too lengthy. Maybe I may make a video on the charts. Pe focus uh, there is some little bit of pessimism, which is there on the short term charts. Uh, personally, in my trade, uh, I think uh, since March, I was fully uh, invested in my trade portfolio, 100%. But uh, I think two weeks back was the first time in last four months where I went in 50% cash. But trading is a very, very dynamic thing. I mean, you need to readjust, you need to keep adjusting every week depending on the market. But yeah, there is some pessimism on the short term charts. The stop losses got hit and hence I came in trade. But the investing looks as usual. So I will discuss the chart separately in some video. But let's say given the short term, uh, you know, sentiment weaker charts is there. Let us say the market corrects by 5% by the time we finish this financial year. So March 2024, let's say from today, Nifty 500 corrects by 5% and Nifty 500 company EPS grows by 10%. Given this quarter, the growth was 19%. In March 2024, your P will become 19.9. .9. So you should never take price correction in isolation. No isolation bias. And 19.920 is a fair value in the market. It's a fair value. Most of the times market trades between 19 to 21, 22. You don't get a market froth at less than 20p. 
So we just with 5% correction and 10% EPS growth rate, you are coming in the pair zone. So where is the froth in the market? So why to go in full cash? And 5% correction is nothing in equity. Let us say you go for a 10% correction. 10% correction is decent. Every year we see a 10% correction. And let us say the EPS grows at 10%. Then we get less than 19p in the market. That means I will go and I will start deploying some cash in this kind of market. And let us say we continue with the 20% kind of EPS growth rate. Then with the 10% correction, you are around 17p. Uh, below 17p market trades, if I can recall, market has traded 25%, 30% of the times uh, below 17p and the returns would have been good. It will generate more than 12-13% return if one looks at historic data. So the only thing is with a 19% growth rate last quarter, if you think in next 3-4 quarters, market can do a minus 5 per minus 10% EPS growth rate. You should have some very sound reason of why it will happen. Maybe the global crisis, geopolitics, I am not good enough to predict those things. I try to go quarter by quarter, uh, seeing how things are happening. Until us, we are at extreme of cycle where we have done really well for 3-4 years with 20% kind of growth rate. Uh, you know, this is how bubbles are made when, you know, everybody is doing so well that people start doing mistakes. We have not done that, uh, you know, off late in that kind of manner. So that is why you see the probability of these kind of scenarios being less. The place where I'm looking at could be somewhere around this area, which could play out if market corrects by 5 to 10%. And these are good accumulation points. So I don't see a froth in the market. I can't deny that there could be a 10% correction. But if that correction happens, and if this is the kind of EPS growth rate continues, I will take it as a buy opportunity in my investing portfolio and then looking at the companies. Uh, but... This is how I see it. So I don't see a froth. I do agree that to put the new money, we may not be in the best comfortable position. But if this is the kind of EPS growth rate we have, and if we see a 5 to 10% correction, I don't deny the fact that I'll be looking to add little aggressively in my investing portfolio around these P's. So I have not yet included any kind of technical analysis. It was pure funda and pure price-driven analysis, statistical analysis. But I hope this gives you again an idea that in times of these kind of situation when there's a lot of debate, how to go and look at the data and how to look at the data in totality rather than thinking in isolation and make data-driven probabilistic decisions of acting rather than working on a gut feel or emotion or what we are hearing around. And this is what my endeavor have been to make everybody think in a data-driven manner, in a probabilistic manner. And I hope this video did the same justice. I will see you again with another video. Thank you. And if you like our work, uh, help us to you know, reach out to more folks. Uh, help us to expand our YouTube network. Thank you.